So we're going to move on now to trig integrals. Okay, so these are integrals involving trig functions. And there are certain forms that do tend to pop up. Uh, ones involving sine and cosine are quite common. Ones involving secant and tangent are also quite common. Um, a lot of these integrals will be the result of making um, trigonometric substitutions, which is the subject of the next section. But of course, we need to know how to evaluate the resulting integrals before we can look at trig substitution. Okay, so first we're going to look at integrals of this form, we have, where we have some power of sine multiplied by a power of cosine, and we want to evaluate the integral. Okay. Um, now, there are a number of, of ways that you can attack these. There are different identities that apply. Okay. Um, but one of the, the kind of basic approaches to take is to remember that you know, um, we can always write sine squared in terms of cos squared. We can always write cos squared in terms of sine squared. Um, but we also know that if we want to do a u substitution, right, we know that if you take, you know, we can maybe add this, this on, that, that you know, the, if we take the differential of, of sine, right, we know we get cos x dx, and we know that if we take the differential of cosine, we get minus sine x dx, right? Um, so if you have something like this, where cosine shows up just to the first power, or sine shows up to the first power, this is a very simple uh, integra integral by substitution. In fact, it's one that you've probably already done, right? So if we have something like this, we know that we can just take u to be sine x. We can take, and that makes du equal to cos x dx. And so what we get is the integral of u cubed du, and we know that that's simply 1 over 4 u to the 4. And we put back in that u is equal to sine x. And we're done, right? Maybe you can even do that one in your head. Right? It's, it's relatively straightforward. Um, of course, they're not all going to be that easy, but we are happy when we see odd powers of sine or, or cosine, because it does mean that we can, we can sort of split something off, right? So if we had, just as a slightly more complicated example, let's say we had something like, well, instead of sine cubed times cos, maybe I have sine cubed x and then cos cubed x, okay? Instead of just cos, I have cos cubed. Well, what can I do now? Well, in this case, I guess you got to decide which way you want to go. Do you want to do everything in terms of sine, or do you want to do everything in terms of cosine? Um, most people like to substitute sine if they can, because then you don't get that minus sign when you take the derivative. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, this cos cubed, right, we can split it up. We can split this up as cos squared x times cos x, right? This is a standard technique. If you've got an odd power, you can split one off. That leaves you with an even power, right? And the nice thing about even powers is you can eliminate, you know, if you want to get rid of cosine and get everything in terms of sine, well, if you've got an even power of cosine, you can use the Pythagorean identity to get rid of cos. We can write this as, else, switch colors. So this becomes the integral of sine cubed x times 1 minus sine squared x times cos x. Right. And now I can make the same substitution that I made up there, right? And this becomes the integral of u cubed times 1 minus u squared du, which of course is u cubed minus u to the fifth. So we get our antiderivatives, 1 over 4 u to the 4, 1 over 6 u to the 6, and we put back sine. So 1 over 4 sine to the fourth x, 1 over 6 sine to the 6 x, and we have it, okay? So anytime 
at least one of these two powers is odd, you can use a similar technique to sort of right, get everything except for that one power in terms of all in terms of sine or all in terms of cosine, and then it's a simple u substitution, and then you've got a polynomial, and we know how to handle polynomials. Um, situations where both powers are even are a little bit trickier. We'll see examples like that as well. Um, so in the next few videos, we'll look at a few more examples, looking at different situations where we vary these powers for sine and cosine, and we'll see how we handle each of those in turn.